Hi, this is the next part of Restoring Fairy Tales Live. Um, I'm Sophia Bogle. This is the Save Your Books live Facebook event. And I'm going to try and remove this tape by putting this in water. So I started out by putting cold water in, about a half an inch. And this is, you know, it's clean water. You have to make sure you're not adding to the damage of the pages. So if you don't have clean water out of the tap, you're going to want to use distilled water. And then, <clears throat> since I put the cold water in, now I'm adding water that's been boiled. And never pour directly onto your page. But what I'm going for is I want some quite hot water, but you should still be able to touch it. Oh, that's getting there. So the water isn't boiling. I boiled it and then it's been sitting there for 20 minutes in, in the thermos thingy. So that's about there. And I'm going to add a little more hot water. And if it gets too hot, then you would just add some cold. Um, <clears throat> And that's it. Now we will come back to this later on in the live feed and we will try to get this apart. Oh, there's one more. I've got this page which has this tape residue that's, you know, maybe we can clean some of that off. We'll see. Maybe it'll work. <clears throat> All right. Now, we'll just set those aside. Okay, um, let's see. Hi there. Uh, well, we're not going to get the book done today. I've realized that. There's just so much to do, and it just, it just all takes time. So, I'm going to show you what I've started here. <clears throat> I got the text block in the press here and put paste on about 15-20 minutes ago. Um, this is this is a tricky book because the the mull really attached to the sewing. Um, not at the not at the head here and not at the tail, but all of these I would start to pull the mull off and it was just the sewing was like wanting to come with it. Sometimes it's better to remove the mull dry when it has separated from the sewing, but in this case it has not. So I really wanted to make sure that it was going to come off. This one, this side has been soaking the longest. I thought I would do a test section of it. You can kind of see how the the sewing here has been pulling with the when I was trying to remove it before. And yeah, this is just gonna be a little tricky. Oh yeah. And there are threads going across this area right here that um, are on the outside for some reason. I don't know. I'm going to show you. I'm going to clean off a little bit more and then you'll be able to see it. Oh boy, this is going to take a while. So there is no sewing going across right here, but there is sewing here. And it's strange because the sewing is going across as though there were, you know, supportive tapes here, but there are no supportive tapes. Okay, I think I can tilt this up, show that a little better. You can see. So if we cut those, then the, the sewing is just pretty much gone and you'd have to re-sew the entire book. We really don't want to do that. That would be a pain. So, 
we're going to be very careful and just get what we can of all of this ball and the old glue. And this is where you get in trouble because you're like, oh, it's just coming off. I'll just pull. And if you pull, you're just, you might just start pulling the sewing right off. So you have to watch and see what it's doing. Yep, see there's more sewing going across there. It's kind of nice to get the bulk of the mull off if you can. Get it out of the way. Like I said, this had been soaking for about 20 minutes. I'll tell you what, you only make that mistake once. <laughs> if you happen to soak the mull and you're, you're unaware of these threads and you just start scraping because on, typically on books like this, the sewing will be just these little lines across, just like the head and tail here. And so you'll be scraping and you won't even think about that. I did do that once. And then I had to re-sew the whole book. That is just what you have to do. What a pain. Better to be aware that this is there. Now, the, the reason that this is not obvious is that the boards were not attached with tapes. If, if the boards are actually attached with sewing tapes, here I'll show you an example of a sewing tape. So here is a, a kind of a sewing tape, linen sewing tape and it would have been underneath the threads here and then it would have been you know onto the boards and that's that's typically your clue when you're removing the glue from a spine but in this case there was no clue and so you would not know that the threads would be on the outside of the signatures here but there they are all right this part is going to be tricky to remove you have to like try and remove it at exactly the right moment in the softness of the uh, the softening process because it's like the wetter they get the more delicate they are <laughs> and so the more you know you're more likely to just tear them off so you want to soften the glue without or you know animal glue paste whatever well it's not paste anyway this old glue you want to soften the glue without you know getting the threads so soft that they then get broken when you when you're removing this. And we may not be able to get all of it. That's just a fact. Um, uh, and another thing is, and this is kind of odd, theoretically you could just cut right down the middle of those threads and glue them back down and it wouldn't affect the strength of the book because the glue would still be holding them in place. I still think you should just try and keep them there, so that's what we're going to do. Anyway, I will set this aside for now, and we'll move on to something else. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was that, uh, oh, let me go down here further, you can actually see the book, that's better. So, yesterday, I had that kind of, you know, mistake happen where I was cleaning this off with a damp 
towel and it kind of started removing the black and started removing some of the gold or possibly just covered it up right here, which I fixed. And I, you know, showed you a little bit about how I would fix the black if I wanted, if we did. And now I want, I want to show you what I should have done, which was to test the um, color fastness of the cloth before I did such a, such a uh, kind of extreme uh, cleaning thing. I mean, it doesn't seem that extreme. It's just water, but it can be. So there you have it. All right. So what we would do, what we should have done, get a Q-tip and um, you can just get it wet. Uh, well, I've got the water right here and just dip it in there. So dip that in the water, make sure it's not, you know, going to drip on anything. And then you can do a spot test. And actually the rear board on the bottom, especially into the hinge area, this would be where that would be. This is a really good place if you're going to test anything. And so you would just put a drop of water like that. Here, I'll hold this up. There's the drop of water. We're actually going to let that sit for a couple of minutes and we'll come back to it. And then you just blot it with the with a different Q-tip or a piece of paper or whatever. And you see if any color comes off with it. And if it does, then you know that you have to, you know, be really careful with water. I mean, that's that's the information you just get from that. All right. And so we'll come back. I'll Somebody remind me of the time. Five minutes tops. And if it's a really warm day, that water's just going to evaporate and you need to start over again because it has to be wet when you actually blot it. Um, and it's pretty hot today, so maybe I'll just do three minutes. All right. Meanwhile, I'm thinking ahead, and I'm thinking that I'm going to be doing a muslin spine. So I need to get, get some muslin and then um, color it to match this. Um, the alternative to coloring it would be I could get the muslin and then I could actually line it with some Japanese tissue that is colored already and so I don't have to match the color because it has a color. Uh, another option is to just use black um, foot cloth because, you know, this would go good with black, a black spine. It has black in it. And it can be hard to match the brown. So that's just one of those things. You just have to pick which way are you going to go. Also, if you do a black book cloth, you could stamp directly on it. Well, actually, you could stamp directly on the muslin. Um, but I'm assuming none of you have stamping machines that can do the titling in gold. So we're going to stick with simpler problems. So here is some unbleached muslin, and instead of, you know, coloring directly on the muslin that I'm going to be using for the book, I'm actually just going to get a sample, actually, I think I'll just cut a large section, large enough to become the spine. And then I'm just going to cut a strip of this for my test, my color tester. And I'm going to work with that. So I've got waste paper. So when I'm matching colors, I will have my uh, boards, whatever I'm trying to match nearby, but I also like to put it kind of up and away so that it's not, you know, flat and nearby. Uh, paint can spatter, you must realize this, and so just protect it. Keep it, you know, further away than where you're working. But let's 
see. Maybe I can have it in the picture just a little bit. There we go. You can still see it there. All right. So I save paint after I've matched it. So this is from a different book that I matched a while ago. And it's pretty close. I'm kind of thinking, hey, I bet I could take this and doctor it to get the right color. I'm thinking I would add some... Hmm... Burnt sienna? Maybe burnt... No, burnt umber? Maybe burnt umber. Yes, that might work. Anyway, so, but if I didn't have this, in order to get this color, I would start with these. I'd start with raw sienna and raw umber. I think that those are good matches. I would have nearby some kind of, you know, dirty-ish yellow, like this yellow oxide, um, because I just see a lot of yellow in there. And then the other thing I see in this color that is not obvious is some green. It's a greenish brown rather than a reddish brown to me at this moment. And I could, you know, who knows what's actually going to happen. Uh, let's see. Oh, hi, Jackie. <laughs> Great. All right. So please ask questions if you have any. I'll, I'll stop and, and answer them. May as well. So let's see. Well, I don't know. Here, here's a question. Shall I start with this or should I start from scratch? What do you think? Oops. Give you a second to think about that. And then I'm going to start. I guess I'm going to start with this. We'll see what happens. I'm smelling it to see if it's still okay. It's okay. You know, paint can go bad after a while. So there, and that's a very greenish brown. So, hmm. Okay. Oh, great, hi Travis. <laughs> so glad people could join me. All right, so I just, you know, I didn't empty this whole thing out. I just put some in here. I am now testing, adding some of this burnt umber. This is just water. And the color um, will change when it dries, so you have to dry it in order to find out what you've actually got. Oh, always before you dip a paintbrush into paint. Um, yes, these are all acrylics. Um, I do really like the golden acrylics, but sometimes I just buy stuff that I find on sale. Oh, I do have a color wheel. Um, this is the color wheel I really like, and I do have a blog post about this on my website. So. It might just be for members. I can't remember. Sorry. Anyway, but this is it, and it's um, it's just it's for oil colors. But what I like about it is that it just gives you a sense of where you're going. So like, um, if you feel like you've got too much red in the color, you go, oh, I need to get more green. If if you're feeling like, oh, the color looks like this, but I want it to be more like this, you add that. So uh, anyway, it's a great one. All right, and I was just saying, before you dip your paintbrush into paint, always get it wet. That'll help with cleanup later. And I'll do like a, a, you know, an inch square. You don't have to do a lot, just to find out what the color is going to be. Um, prevent your paintbrushes from rolling around. Just put them in a vase. Make sure they don't dry out. That is something that happens. All right. Um, sadly, I have to use the hair dryer to get this dry. So I'm going to do that over here. Sorry. videos I always cut that out um, all right 
right, so there's that. Let's just hold that up. Um, I think I went a little too much burnt umber because I feel like it went a little redder than this. This is more green. So I could kind of drown it out by putting more of this in, which oh, that could be a good idea. Just get that back in there. Let's try that. So this is how I do it. I just do one inch in a row so that I can kind of see what's going on. And if I add any new colors from, you know, other tubes of paint, I'll, I'll kind of put them separately. So like, because I, I have this over here, it's like I did this one, but I have these possibilities. And that way I can remember what I've used and what, what I haven't used yet. Okay, sorry, I'm going to blow dry again. And you have to be careful when you put up one of your test things up against your actual book because it might be wet on the back. So be super careful. And let's see. Oh, that's looking better. Hmm. That's pretty darn good. There, there's probably room for slight, slight change improvements. But another thing I know is that if I compare it to this board and then look at the other board, you know, they're they're slightly different. They're slightly different because I, you know, washed this first board. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, boy, it might need a little something. Let me just look at this close up. Hmm. Well, it might need that green. I know it's weird, but um, I'm just gonna try this out. I never, you know, when I'm doing such a big change, I'll do it in a separate compartment to see if it's gonna go the right direction. In cases like this, do you prefer to start from scratch and use the color wheel to get started? Oh, uh, yes, they definitely dry differently. Oh, yeah, green, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, so I'm going to set this over here. Now I'm going to add just a, just a titch, not, not even a half a pea. Ugh, less than that. Some colors go really far, especially the dark ones, so... Just gonna add that, and I'm gonna see if this is gonna go where I want it to go. I need some water. Notice I have some paint on my hand. I'm gonna try and get that later. I find that typically the acrylics will dry darker, but I have had a couple of occasions where I was surprised to find that they dried lighter. I don't know why. Okay, that that is a very subtle difference. I think I think I'll go just a little more green just to kind of really find out what that green is doing to it. I mean, what I would say it's doing is it's lightening it up in a weird way. It's graying it. It's turning it grayer. Which is good. I think I wanted some some of that. So, if this little test run side works out, then I would add green to the main piece I've got over here. Alright. So 
So I've got all this paint on there. I'm just going to wipe it off. That'll make it easier to get that. And we'll go like that. Okay, hair dryer. Pretty subtle difference. Um, hmm. All right. That's what it looks like now. And I actually, oh man, that's hard to say. I'm kind of in between. I kind of liked the last one. I might split that difference. Actually, it's making the last one look better to me. Now I'm wondering if, if adding black, which would kind of also gray it down, would possibly be a good idea. It's just, it's another suggestion. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess I may as well give it a shot. Let me try that. Oh, oops. I'm not following my own rule. I tried the green, now I'm adding the black. So, I'll just... Oh, well, actually, maybe I'll just add a little black to this, see what happens. That's just turning into gray. That's not good. Okay, I'm just going to add all this back into here. And mix that tiny bit of black in here. Add a tiny bit of green. And probably I'm just going to call this good enough um, for a client that wanted this to be ex an exact match. I could spend more time on this, but I don't think that that's necessary since it's my book. Let's do one last test just to see where we're at, see if I'm crazy. very similar and something I might like to do it at a point like this is to actually oh I'm picking this up I totally forgot about my little test spot darn it that's what happens with these things all right I'm going to show you the quick and dirty way to test the um, color fastness of your book Since the little blot test thing that I did I got distracted with and that's just to get a damp q-tip and run it against the very bottom edge of the book and obviously that's not color fast so we would have gotten the same result with the little blotter test thing but this is faster so that's that's the way to do that and then you would just go oh so maybe Wiping it with, you know, a cloth would not be a good idea. Right. All right. And then here's another thing. We can just test the color of this right up against 
the color on the boards and just kind of, you know, see what's going on. And if it, if it just blends in, I might go, oh, that's pretty good. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's, this, one's, this one's hard for me to tell for some reason. Usually these browns are super easy for me. This one I'm feeling... Yeah, I don't know. I think I want it to go a little darker again. Oh, it's just confusing me. I know. I'll just do the whole cloth and then we'll um, find out. But I'm not going to do that now. We have 25 minutes left. And I definitely wanted to get back to the paper that's being washed, as well as the other thing. So I'm going to set all this aside. Preserving the brush right now. Okay. Alright, well, this is the most time sensitive, so I'll get back to this. I think that's actually been a, a good amount of time. I don't think it's going to get any easier than, than it is right now to remove this stuff without cutting the threads. Okay. Um, I see your question there, Jackie. Um, treat the rest of the book cover with something before you touch up the color. Um, hmm. No? No. I think that's the simple answer. I mean, you would just want to make sure it's as, as clean as you want it to be. Or as clean as it can be before you... Well, that's part of the hierarchy. I, I created the clean first, then color... Um, then correct, line things up, basically. And then if you're going to use, you know, paste or glue, that's the time you would do it. And then any protection. And that's just a, a guideline, hier hierarchical guideline to how to do book repair. Okay, you can see this is going to take a while um, to get perfectly clean. And if you leave it on here and just line the book with muslin again over this, this will never be really attached because the moisture um, from, well, anyway, it'll just be a weird thing. The old glue doesn't want to stick anymore. It would just be loose underneath here because of the old glue. And just get some of this off. I'm just going to do what I can with a quick... Swipe. Oh, that's not too bad. You would think that using this sharp knife would be a bad idea for this, but in fact, it just works very well because I'm not sawing at it with the, the edge. I'm not cutting it. Yeah, 
this book binding. Book repair at its best. Very, very slow going. So I will finish this up later on my own because now I want to get back to this because it's been oh, about a half an hour and let's see how it's going. We can see that the water is um, changing color a bit. It is kind of you know, not as clean as it was so it's obviously getting some dirt or whatnot out of the paper. This is curling up a bit. Oh, the water is dead cold right now. It's actually much better to work on this when it's warmer, so I'm going to warm up some more water. Yeah, sometimes I'll wind up dumping out the cold water and putting in more hot water because that dumps off all the um, the dirt and impurities that are coming out of the paper anyway. And um, this, this curling um, can actually cause, you know, major damage to a page. So you do have to have to watch it, especially in, in hotter water because it'll curl up really fast. I've seen a, a book with tape on it um, curl up so fast that it just tore the edge of the page right off. So that's something to be careful of. Um, I don't want to use a knife in here. I'm going to get a micro spatula. I'm just kind of doing my first explorations here. Oh look, it's coming off. Yay. So it's looking like this even though I don't have... Oh, there we go. It's getting caught right there. That's okay. Alright. Alright, so that came off, wow, really easily. And there is some residue here that I'm hoping may come off if I add some more hot water. I've boiled more water and I'm pouring boiling water into the tray. going to take a little while to um, affect this again, but meanwhile I'm going to take a look at what else is going on. See if this has changed the yellowing here, and we can see this used to be quite yellow, and now it is not. Yay! So I'm assuming that's what all the, the yellow in the water is, is, is from that. And this was stuck down on here and it's coming off very easily with just a little kind of pushing with the knife. It's nice to have a brush to help remove the residue and clean up the excess glue things that are in there, little paper. Alright, and then these pages were stuck together right along here. Let's see how they're going. Well, they are 
still stuck together. Hmm. Yeah, they're not they're not coming apart easily. What I can see when I'm doing this is that there's a layer of some kind of white glue um, stuck in there. Maybe the same kind of stuff as that tape, maybe not. Oh, maybe maybe it's not white glue. Anyway, the, the glue is, is um, acting like a, an actual layer. Nope, that's too wide. I want a ruler that'll hold that down so I can tug on it a little bit. And all my rulers have disappeared. Oh, here's one. All right. There we go. It's just giving me a little leverage all along the paper. Hmm. I can see it's starting to come up right here. bottom of this tray is not completely flat, which is making this ruler thing a little superfluous, but not entirely. Uh, yep. Alright. There. That's all glue. <laughs> so... there and so we lost a little bit of this page but it's looking pretty good comparatively um, I might be able to get this glue off directly while it's still here just everything is so fragile when it's wet you just have to be really careful I'm gonna see if I can't get this going There we go. And if you just pull low and slow, make it roll against itself. Oh my god, I still have paint on my hand. <laughs> yeah, always keep your hands clean. Oh, that looks like it started missing a piece. All right, I got over enthusiastic, but honestly, I think that's just stuck together right there. So I lost a tiny bit. That's okay. All right. <laughs>
can you throw that away? Let's go back to looking at this page with the residue. Um, if you put Polytex uh, underneath the pages, it, it you know gives it some support. I only bother with that for really, really fragile paper, but it's definitely a thing. Polytex. Here is some Polytex. Oops, dropping it right in the water. There you go. Um, it's just a spun polyester. Is it polyester? I think it's polyester thing. And when it's underneath your page, you can move it around more easily. And, you know, pick it up out of the water. All right. Let's see if I can get this residue off of here. I'm just kind of seeing if the brush is going to do anything. Not very much. And I'm being a little incautious. Too fast there. All right, that, the brush didn't do much. And now, just gonna see about the, the knife. Hmm, I guess I'll just start at the bottom here and see what I can do. Yeah, it's just when I, <laughs> you can see it's just like that little piece just floated right off there. That's not good. Scratching it does not seem to be removing it. Hmm. This is the kind of thing that um, you would probably take to a conservation lab. They can get their chemicals and, you know, work on, on actually removing all of this stuff. For people without that kind of thing, what is going to happen is I'm going to get this out of here, and at least the tape is off of it, and in order to preserve this page, I'm going to line this entire taped brown and white section with some kind of Japanese tissue and paste, probably probably the Kozo, because it doesn't need to be super strong and you want to have it less strong than the paper. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I just want to do something that'll help preserve it. And it might actually make it look better, which is a bonus. Um, that is one of the reasons in this situation that I might just scrape more of this odd white stuff off. Oh, look, some of that's actually coming up. Yay. Looks like I can get the rest of the, um, what do they call it? There's the carrier and then the adhesive. Yeah. So the white stuff is part of the, the carrier. Yeah, and I may just trim just a little bit of that to remove that. Anyway, boy, it's so much fun to scrape all this stuff. Um, we're almost done with our time, but before we go, I'm going to show you how I um, take these out of here and what they go on and how they're going to dry. Let's see. First, I'm going to just put them onto paper towels and get the initial ton of water off of them. Don't need that board. All right. But I don't want to leave them on these paper towels because the paper towel has a pattern. 
and you could actually create the pattern on the paper by leaving it on a patterned piece of blotted paper. So don't do that. But it is okay to like just get some of the water off. And then um, I've got several different kinds of blotter paper around. And this is that thin. It's not very thick. And the best thing is to have the Holytex. Um, you don't you don't have to have the Holytex though. So, but that helps keep it from sticking if you know there's any residue left. But anyway, that's how I, I'm going to be taking all of these out, set that aside, and then when they're almost dry, when they're just humidified, that's when I would press them again. All right, let's get the rest of these out. And you can stack them because it's, you know, blotter on blotter. You could do a sandwich with the Holytex. Alright. Just two more. I'm not overly worried about what order they're coming out because, like I've mentioned, they're all clearly numbered. That is something to think about both before you put them in and as you're taking them out. It's nice to keep them in order. I mean, I've done a I've done this to a book with, you know, 500 pages, and that's a lot. Obviously, just dump the water out somewhere safe. And what else did we have to talk about? Anything? Hmm. Oh, well, I can kind of tell you part of what we're going to be doing next. And that is kind of an exciting thing. Um, where did it go? All right, I'm a little... All right, so I'll get the paint painted. There we go. I'll get the uh, new muslin spine painted when we come back. And when we come back, which I am not sure the date, so I'll just stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to take the spine, take the book, and I'm going to sew in this as a placeholder for those pages that are missing in the front. If you'll recall, there are like four or five pages missing. And so I'll show you how I'm going to attach them to this book in a, in a really nice and simple way. All right, well, thank you all for being here. And um, don't forget to share this video and um, become a member of Save Your Books for more information. Thanks for watching.